the chronic that form part of the name in this disease is not there for fancy. This is to tell you how difficult it is to cure once it affects your chicken. Even if it doesn't kill your birds, the bigger problem is that it opens the door for infection for other disease producing organisms to affect your chickens. On this video, I'm going to discuss the easiest ways your chickens could get this CRD. Not only that, I'm also going to talk about the signs and symptoms you will see in laying beds and also the signs you will see in broilers. It doesn't end there. I'm also going to mention specific drugs of choice you can use to treat it completely and the duration for the medication. All these and many more you will get from this video. All you have to do is to watch till the end. What's up my people and welcome to Life of a Farmer Loaf. You can also follow me on my Facebook page at Life of a Farmer Loaf for regular updates. I remain your anchor Ishokri of Okiranyi. You can call me Ovorans. On this channel, we discuss farming in details, how to grow your farm, challenges faced by farmers and how to control them. So ensure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get regular updates whenever I upload a new video. Don't hesitate to give this video a like, comment and most importantly, share for others to benefit. Without wasting your time, let's dive into the main cocoa. CROD is chronic respiratory disease and it is commonly called cough by poultry farmers. Firstly, just as the name implies, the word chronic is not just there for fancy. That's to tell you that it is difficult to eliminate once it affects your chickens. Secondly, it is also a respiratory disease which has to do with the airways or air sacs of your chicken. This CROD in chickens is caused by a bacteria called Mycoplasma galliceptacum. If CROD in your bed is not treated right, many other diseases will also get entrance into your beds. So let us discuss the causes of this disease and its mode of transmission. The first way your chicken can contact this disease is from the hatchery or breeder farm and this is called vertical transmission. That is to say, the organism known as Mycoplasma galliceptacum can be incorporated into eggs by infected parent stock of breeders and chickens hatched carrying the mycoplasma infection. This is the more reason you have to be very careful of where you book your day old chicks from. You must do your research very well and make sure to get your chicks from a reputable and trusted hatchery or vendors. The second way your chicken can get this disease is through horizontal transmission. Disease transmission may also take place from direct contact with infected beds and this method will cause the spread of this disease throughout the flock. It can all be transmitted when healthy beds have direct contact with equipment that are already contaminated by infected beds. That is to say, eggs, feed, water, feeders and even farm attendants could be carriers. Let me drop a bonus point for you at this point. The organisms called E. coli is the one bacteria that will first gain access once your chickens comes down with this disease known as CROD before other diseases will follow. Sometimes, factors such as fluctuation in temperature or high concentration of ammonia from the fowl droppings and dust in the air could cause CROD. All these factors I just listed are associated with poor or inadequate ventilation. So you must ensure your poultry house is well ventilated. Let me discuss about the possible signs you will see mostly in layers before I will discuss that of broilers. The first sign in laying bed is that the feed consumption will reduce and this will lead to decrease in egg production and loss of weight of the beds. Secondly, you will notice abnormal feathers in the beds. Thirdly, you will notice nasal and ocular discharge that is a kind of watery eyes. Fourthly, there will be rattling in the windpipes like a grumbling sound. You will hear the bed coughing and gasping for air is also very noticeable and in most times this occurs in the hot period of the day or at night. You will also notice sneezing and shaking of the head. All these are the signs you will see in laying beds. Now, let me tell you what you will notice in your umbrellas when they have signs of CROD. But please, kindly subscribe to my channel if you haven't and click the bell icon to get regular updates. Also give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. 
and this will also help me to grow my channel. Thanks. In Brellas, CRD usually occurs between the third and the sixth weeks in Brella life, and at this stage, you will notice the following signs. One, there will be poor feed conversion and a sharp reduction in the weight gain of the brellas. This will eventually lead to slow growth rate in younger brellas, most especially if it happens at the third week. Secondly, you will notice leg problems in your brellas. Then thirdly, you will also discover that the rate of spread of the disease within the flock will be high, but there will be low mortality. It is when other infections have set in that you will then see high mortality. Before I tell you about the best drugs of choice to use, let's discuss about the best control measures you need to put in place. And that is one, is to put proper biosecurity in place. Never you underestimate what good biosecurity measures will do to your farm. It will save you a whole lot of money. Secondly, ensure to book your shakes from a reputable hatchery and trusted vendors or shake suppliers. The third point is that you can vaccinate against CRD disease, but the truth is that vaccinations have not proven to be a very successful preventive measure or approach, and reason being that CRD is often complicated by underlying diseases. Fourthly, ensure there is proper cross ventilation and not just ventilation. Mark that word cross ventilation. Then fifth, construction of the poultry house must be done in such a way that external white beds or wandry beds or animals such as rodents will not gain access into it. The sixth point is that make sure to stop people or farm visitors from entering the farm. There should be red zones, that is areas that are out of band to visitors and also green zones where visitors will stay. Now. Let's discuss about the treatment and the best drug to use. But one challenge you will face if your birds come down with CRD is that there is likely going to be causes of reoccurrence if not treated properly. So, to avoid this, you have to stick to this medication I'm about to mention. Also, you should know that these drugs have withdrawal periods and you should adhere to their prescription if you must use any of them. Now, some farmers uses penicillin but let me tell you now that mycoplasma have resistance to penicillin because the drugs act on the cell wall but you see antibiotics such as tetracyclines are very good when i say tetracycline i mean the likes of oxytetracycline chlorotetracycline and doxycycline also you have the macrolides such as erythromycin tylosine spiramycin, lincomycin, and ketasamycin are also very helpful. Then, going further on drugs that are very effective, you can also use the quinolones such as nofloxacin, enrofloxacin, and levofloxacinol. In fact, you see that enrofloxacin, especially the levofloxacin, are very effective for CRD. Now, let me talk of a more effective drugs that you can combine in cases of a more stubborn CRD and this will clear it completely. But kindly subscribe if you want more videos like this and don't forget to turn on the bell notification to get regular updates. Give this video a like, comment and share for others to benefit. Thanks. One major cause of this stubborn CRD is when it is combined or the atresis of other bacterial infections like E. coli. This is one of the reasons you keep treating and it keep reoccurring. In some cases, the above mentioned drugs might not do the work effectively. This is where you now have to combine some other medication. So, you are to administer levofloxacin with cholestine, or better still, you can use neomycin and dosicycline through drinking water in addition to the above treatment for 3 to 5 days. Then sometimes when chicks are known to come from parents that have CRD or there is a hatchery that their chicks normally comes down with CRD, it must be passed to the chicks and this need a holistic approach. And in this case, you are to use levofloxacin with cholestine during the first 48 hours upon arrival at the brooder house. 
and then subsequently at 20 to 24 days for 24 to 48 hours period. Then for brellas, you should administer the medication for the first 7 to 10 days in either feed or water. While administering all this medication, efforts should also be made to reduce dust and secondary infections. You should also try to improve the ventilation of the poultry house to have the best result. Let me tell you of a more concerning issue on these medications I have listed. Thoroquinolones in the likes of enroflozacin, danoflozacin, and nofluzacin, even flumoquine and many others have withdrawal period and this is due to the fact that they, they have effect to public health because cross resistance to human strain of campylobacter and other bacteria. Before I give you the last point, kindly smash the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get regular updates. If at all you have gotten tangible information from this video, click the thumb up button to encourage me to do more and also share for others to benefit. Thanks. Last thing, antibiotics like tylosine, tilmocosine, avlosine, tetracyclines, and uh, mostly the dosicycline, chlorotetracycline, oxytetracycline, spiramycin, erythromycin, gentamicin, then neomycin can be used alone and sometimes combined with others to cure and to control the disease. That is to say, if you use any of the single medication and you don't get result, that means there is resistance. So, combining two drugs will do a perfect job. Thanks and God bless. See you in my next video. Peace out.